Hello, this is Robert Rickover at Body Learning, and today my guest is Jane Staggs, who's an Alexander Technique teacher in Cambridge, England. She's been teaching for over 30 years, and more recently she has um, become a Pilates teacher and um, certified by Body Control Pilates, which is a, a major uh, Pilates organization in the UK. And we're going to talk today about how the Alexander Technique could be useful for people who are um, taking Pilates classes and I think a little bit about how Pilates could be useful for people who are studying the Alexander Technique. Uh, Jane, welcome to the show. Hi, Robert. Good to talk to you, and and I should say that Jane and I were classmates uh, at the School of Alexander Studies over 30 years ago <laughs> in London. How about that? Uh, Jane, could you begin by giving our listeners just a short uh, uh, description or, uh, of the Alexander Technique? Yes. Um, the Alexander Technique is uh, a way of learning... Uh, to improve your posture, improve your movement patterns, improve the way that you just live your life on a very ordinary daily basis. Uh, it's a learning skill. I always tell people they are going to be learning skills, skills of awareness, skills of movement, posture. So they self self management, you could say. Mm -hmm. And it's and I've heard it sometimes described as kind of a pre technique. That is. It's something that will help you with any process you're learning, any other technique like, say, Pilates. Yes, that, absolutely, yeah. yes. So um, Pilates tends to be, from my limited experience with it, um, pretty intense physical workout. Maybe I, Maybe that's not the way it always is. Uh, how would, um, in your experience, how does how does some knowledge of the Alexander technique make that uh, more effective for somebody who's who's doing it? Well, let me start by saying that Pilates, at least in Britain, is a very broad church. There's lots of different types of Pilates, mm -hmm. and the sort that I do, the way I was trained with body control, it's it's a very modern version of Pilates where they took the classical exercises, the classical mat work, which are very hard, very tough indeed, mm -hmm. um, and they broke them down into much simpler uh, segments so that anybody could learn and use Pilates. You didn't have to be a 25-year-old ballerina you mm -hmm. know, or someone mm -hmm. who was at the top of their physical form or who had spent a long time in a uh, Pilates studio acquiring the, the, the strength, the, the skills, etc., that would be needed for the classical mat work. Mm -hmm. so, so having said all that... Right. And, um, and I have to say my own Pilates experience was uh, of the more vigorous uh, type. Um, yeah. It was... Uh, I used to joke with my instructor, who I liked... Um, that the worst 15 minutes of every week was walking to the class for me, anticipating this, and the best 15 minutes was leaving, knowing I wouldn't have to do it again for a week. Um, I didn't, uh. and, and I have to say, ultimately, I, I discontinued, partly because it was so unpleasant, <laughs> mm. and partly because uh, uh, there came a point when the benefits didn't seem to be worth the uh, the effort on my part. So I kind of oh. wish I had had your version of it. So you should have come to me. I should have come to, to Cambridge <laughs> and studied with you. Pilates, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Or find a body control teacher because it's a very different approach to what you've just described, very different indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, people usually find it quite pleasurable. Mm -hmm. um, the emphasis it of the way that I teach and also the way I was trained in Pilates is very much on good technique, you know, good body use. It's, it's very much um, focusing on what you're doing, it's concentration, but it's, it's really trying to do the exercises which may appear from the outside to be very simple, mm -hmm. but doing them with, with focus and with really correct technique. 
Right. So, and and I was going to say, I, I at some point I became interested enough in Pilates to actually read Pilates books, which does don't doesn't take a long time to get through them. No. <laughs> and no. uh, certainly, if you read Pilates, he was all about quality over quantity. Yes. And uh, yes. he talks about the hundreds, for example, and. He, he, at some point, he says, well, you don't really need to do more. You know, you just want to do the ones you're doing well. And, exactly. Uh, yeah. Exactly. So, um, and this begins to sound more like the Alexander Technique in a way, doesn't it? A, a lot of things that he wrote sound kind of Alexandrian. I, I'm, there are several quotes of his that could easily have been written by Alexander, in my opinion. I, I think he... My sense is that he saw the same kind of issues that Alexander saw, and he came up with a very different way of helping people to improve improve how they moved and how their their posture and coordination. But that he uh, he approached it very differently. But I would think that someone studying Pilates who would would really benefit from some basic Alexander. Um, training to start with. Yes, for, for sure. And the way I, I teach, I don't teach anybody Pilates until they've done some Alexander work, mm -hmm. either with me or maybe with another teacher. Right. And, and I only teach people one-to-one, -one, so it's, it's a very um, subtle approach to Pilates, you could say. And people find that... Um, the quality of attention and awareness that they develop through their Alexander lessons and the, the sort of subtlety of the Alexander work, then that just flows into the Pilates work. And the Pilates is in a way, uh, just a way of expanding the movement repertoire. In classic Alexander work, we do the chair work, you know, people stand, they sit, they stand, they lie on the table, they might walk a little or crawl a little, do a bit of breathing, speaking. But then with Pilates, and remember I'm using quite simple exercises, particularly to begin with, it just takes that movement uh, a little bit um, broader. So we begin to use movements that are still quite um, everyday movements in a way. Mm -hmm. But it just takes us out of that, that just standing and sitting and doing that rather limited uh, movement. And one of the problems, of course, with modern life is we don't move enough, and we don't get out of a very restricted range of movement. And it's the old story, if you don't use it, you lose it. People right. become more right. and more restricted in their movements. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I assume that these, these um, Pilates... Uh, movements that you you would introduce after someone has had some Alexander uh, uh, are for the purpose of not just expanding movement range, but maybe uh, strengthening of of muscles where that seems to be called for. Would that be a yes. fair? Because oh, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking of the the sort of classic Alexander teaching procedures: hands on back a chair, getting in and out of a chair. Uh, table work, of course, uh, aren't primarily muscular strengthening activities. They're kind of frameworks within which to learn how to direct yourself. Yes. Whereas yes. at some point, um, and, and by themselves, are not going to strengthen weak muscles all that much. No. Um, no, and Pilates does work on strengthening, for sure. It, it increases flexibility, mobility, mm -hmm. but it also strengthens us, mm -hmm. particularly in you know, core strength, which is such a buzzword uh, all over the place, at least here in this country. Every, <laughs> here, too. Yeah. Everybody's into core strength. And there's right, right. Quite a, quite a range of ways of defining core strength, I think, but... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I would say there are core muscles all over the body, including your hands, your feet. It's not just your abdominals, mm -hmm. which is what it's often thought to be. Certainly your back muscles, some of those. Uh, yeah, We won't get into, into naming muscles. That's, that's not uh, that's right. boring. <laughs> but, right, uh, right. Core musculature is a more subtle concept than it is sometimes uh, thought of. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and 
it, it is interesting. I think many Alexander teachers um, are not that disposed towards physical exercise in general. Um, I may be wrong. I mean, Alexander himself seemed to, to some extent, Extent, extent disparage uh, physical exercises. Uh, what do you? Yes. How do you? How how do you resolve that uh, with with your Pilates work? Well, Alexander, yeah, he famously said, "Don't do exercises. You know, they're yeah. bad for you." And there is, I think it's on the on the way out but there is a feeling i think in the alexander community that you know a lot of exercise isn't good for you or you do you can swim and you can walk maybe you could maybe you could run you know mm -hmm. ride a horse but you don't want to do anything that's not whole body and very very kind of um, you know traditional movement like that mm -hmm. but i think i think it's going out this anti exercise bias because you know people are just they need to exercise. Uh, and I think there's more and more recognition of that. Certainly the medical profession is pushing exercise in a big way. And it has been proven to have such a beneficial effect on people's health. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so important. And everybody now spends their lives sitting down in front of a computer. And it's, it's a deadly activity. <laughs> right, <laughs> quite, right. Quite uh, real, really. But I, I guess a lot of Alexander teachers would say, uh, uh, if you are going to exercise, it would be good if you could exercise in a way that doesn't um, strengthen your harmful habits of movement. Of course. And of I, course. I, I think a classic example that I've heard many Alexander Technique teachers cite, and I've cited it myself, would be someone who, when they walk, they might create some uh, harmful tension in their neck and pull their heads back and down a bit and compress their bodies. And when they go into jogging or running, that pattern becomes exaggerated so that it, it in a way, if you're not careful, you can strengthen some really harmful habits of movement. Um, well, that's that's very true. That's that's very true. And I think that's what Alexander was thinking about. My guess is that I'm he sure probably yeah. saw yeah. some people working on bar with barbells or whatever they did back then, and he saw <laughs> they were misusing themselves, and he thought, "Well, better not to do anything." But uh, as you say, exercise has incredible value. And the big issue is, are, are you doing it well? And Alexander Technique can certainly help with that. And if, to the extent that we could consider Pilates an exercise, which I, I guess it is, oh, it, 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 is. Could help, it is it an could, exercise. It could help with that. It um, is an exercise, yes. Yeah. So I, I, w I don't think we would, um, would be fair to, to end our conversation without talking a little bit about how Pilates could be helpful for people who are studying Alexander or indeed Alexander technique uh, teachers. What do you what do you, what's your what are your thoughts on that topic? How Pilates could be helpful to Alexander teachers. Yes, and students, yes. yeah. Yeah. Well, it's another way of exploring your use pattern, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, the Alexander technique has been applied to all kinds of other activities for a long time. To, to singing, to playing musical instruments, to, to swimming, to, to running by some people, uh, to speech, acting. So there, it's called the free technique. So there's nothing new about applying the Alexander technique to all kinds of human activity and endeavor. Mm -hmm. Why not apply it um, to Pilates? And why not use Pilates as a way of exploring how you how you use yourself. And, uh, mm -hmm. and and I would think the benefits that Pilates offers in general, so let's just take the core strength one to start with, uh, my observation is that a lot of Alexander Technique teachers could use a little more core strength <laughs> than they have. Yeah, um, I'd go for that. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think it's possible 
to to get into a mindset where you're thinking, well, all I need to do is learn how to direct myself really well and subtly and powerfully. But if you're if you've got some structural issues or some chronic weaknesses in your body, it's going to take forever for the Alexander to 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 um, to remedy that, if at all, maybe many many lifetimes. And, I would uh, I would absolutely agree with that. If you're doing good Pilates, when if you're interested in Alexander technique, of course you're going to be doing good Pilates. Mm -hmm. It will it will improve your use. You know, mm -hmm. So doing Pilates yes, can yes. really really improve your use Alexander wise. From an Alexander viewpoint, it will improve it. It will give you more length, more breadth, more uh, how, however you want to describe it. It will mm -hmm. improve your Alexander work. Yeah, uh, I, my my pupils find this. Yes, and um, and uh, and I can attest to that. I, I I mentioned earlier my less than perfect experience with Pilates, but I've had more recently. Uh, I've done some a lot of exchanges with an Alexander teacher who is trained in Pilates, uh, who lives in the area, and I, I can certainly attest to that. Um, Pilates. Whatever else he was was a very smart guy, and he figured out some a, a way of targeting uh, muscles or muscle groups that 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 has a level of precision and intelligence behind it that you don't really see in a lot of physical training programs. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely right. And some of the work that some Pilates people are doing, and uh, the police, the Pilates people I know, they're very open-minded and they explore lots of other disciplines, mm -hmm. inclu including the Alexander Technique, but there's you know, so much out there. And some of the work that they're doing is amazingly subtle and yeah. uh, very Alexander, actually. <laughs> yes. I, I, <laughs> Without I, being Alexander. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. we, we aren't the only ones who know about focus, who know about direction, who know about what we call inhibition, not trying too hard, mm -hmm. uh, not going down the old pathways all the time. Uh, they, a, lot of, a lot of disciplines out there, a lot of individuals understand that and are, are applying it to what they're doing. And whether we're doing it through Pilates or doing it through Alexander, what we're all trying to do is improve the way we use ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, to be able to to inhibit and direct in in the Alexander jargon. Mm -hmm. Is there any were anything else that you would like to mention before we uh, we come to a close? Well, you you mentioned um, Alexander probably didn't want people lifting barbells or whatever they were doing back in the day. Yeah. I just, I should just perhaps disclose that for the last year I've been doing some fairly serious weight training. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just imagining, I mean, Alexander, for our listeners who are not familiar, was lived from roughly 1870 to roughly to, to 1955. Mm. So he was, uh, I think when he was expounding on, on exercise and why it wasn't good. He was in, in London in the early part of the, of the 20th century, and I, I would guess that it was weightlifting of some sort, and who knows, calisthenics. I don't yeah, know what was going old fashioned, on old back in England in, in, in the day. <laughs> but, um, um, yeah, I mean, weightlifting... It is a, a a wonderful a way to develop strength if you use it if you do it well. It can also be a very dangerous way of doing oh, it if it, you don't. Uh, I mean, yeah. it's a two-edged sword. But oh, um, it can be very dangerous, very dangerous. You need proper training, and I I had a personal trainer for a while mm -hmm. to teach me weightlifting. Mm -hmm. And um, just to brag a little bit, I think he was pretty impressed by this old lady who could actually do what he was asking me to do, I could position my body and you know, uh, do the correct weightlifting technique uh, better than a lot of people <laughs> because of my Alexander work, you see. Because, because uh, and because uh, one thing that Alexander does teach you is 
how to apply the appropriate amount of effort for the task at hand, whether it's chopping vegetables or walking yes. or lying on your back lifting weights. Yeah. You know, um, so... Well, that might be a great place to uh, <laughs> to bring our conversation to an end. Uh, my guest today has been Jane Staggs, an Alexander Technique teacher in Cambridge, England. She's also a certified body uh, certified Pilates instructor. And uh, if you uh, are lucky enough to live in the Cambridge area, uh, we'll put a link to her website by the interview. We'll also put a link to another site that will enable you to find an Alexander Technique teacher uh, anywhere in the world. Jane, thanks so much for being on the show today. Thank you, Robert.